Hi everyone, I'm Neerja Singh. I am your teenager, the senior teenager and the generational bridge builder. I'm always seeking, seeking, seeking hot potatoes to talk about. Today's hot potato is Gen Z. Now, what is Gen Z? These are young people who have just, the oldest of them is about 24 years, the youngest in the workforce, around 1995 onwards born. And we are going to be talking about their feelings, the importance they give to feelings, and why feelings has suddenly become such a big deal. And to talk about that, we have a very, very special guest with us. That is, you can see her there on the screen. That's Annapurna A. Annapurna mounted India's first summit on emotional intelligence recently. And uh, she's doing that again this year. She is, uh, her company is called Emotionality, Emotionalytics. She's a founder and CEO. She's an HR thought leader. She's a behavior assessor, emotional intelligence practitioner. And she ha will have lots to tell us today, Anupurna. Let's start straight away. This is a very interesting topic. My first question to you is, do you believe, Anupurna, that there is a generational difference in our approach to feelings? What do you say? <laughs> okay, good evening to everybody and thank you, Nidja ma'am, for hosting this and on a very important topic, uh, what we are trying to discuss here. Uh, well, coming back to your question, uh, do, does generations have feelings or is there any difference? My first take is no, emotions are emotions, right? They, any generation, anyone, as a human being, we emote and that's so quite a natural thing. That's what mm -hmm. it is. So it doesn't depend on any uh, generation or it de doesn't depend on any age or gender. It's all neutral. So we all emote because uh, we are living beings and um, extended by our human beings, even animals, birds, everyone, all living creatures emote. Right. So emotions are natural and emotions are very instant and they come. That's what it is. We are all made up of emotions. Right. But, uh, but Annapurna, see our approach to emotions, your, my generation was brought up not to express too much. We were told to be stoic and not be crybabies or not talk too much. And we were brought up to be soldiers, just keep marching, just keep marching, just keep marching. But uh, the young generation is not like that. And uh, tell us a little more about that. Is that how you see it and why is that so? The emotions, uh, uh, yes, while we, come, we, while we compared generations on expressing emotions, yes. uh, there was a lot of stereotypes around uh, emotions, you know. Even if you take a particular emotion, say anger, they, will, mm. they used to tell that, hey, girls should not display anger. They, they are brought up like that, you know. We should not display our anger. We should always gulp our anger in whatever situation we are. Boys should not display their sadness in the form of cry or something. So these are stereotypes which have been built in the generations and that has gone so deep that people didn't understand how to regulate their emotions and how mm -hmm. to display their emotions. And with this came uh, a, a confusion state for another generation which we didn't know, thinking that why shouldn't we, dis we display? So we were of that generation where we went and asked seniors, elders, the teachers, everyone, asking tell why should I not cry? Mm -hmm. Why should I not display anger? What is this that you are trying to tell me? That's what we we were of the, the, that generation. They just didn't give any pro appropriate answer. They just told we were told by our previous generation to yes. shut your mouth, go and do whatever instead. So what this generation did, which was little bit ahead of this generation, was they went to the rooms, they locked up themselves in the rooms, and they started shouting, barking, or yelling and crying. Yes. And came a generation which is present, Gen Z. They told, go for it. We are going to display, we are going to exhibit, and we are feeling this, this is our feeling. So we have the right to express our emotions and we are, we are putting across to you these emotions. So that's right. the change which we had, you know, in the entire three generations, at least three to four generations, if you take it and see how it is happening. But having said that, the 
present generation, what it's trying to do is the right to think which they have taken it up. I would actually concur with them and I would like to be with them actually. I think so too, Annapurna, but sometimes when I see the rage, the rage, especially in girls, there's a real, real rage today. And uh, there's a web series, uh, and, and the name is Churel, Churel. series ka naam hi Churel hai. So there's like, you know, out and out there, demanding to know, questioning and uh, protesting and uh, claiming, claiming. I've heard young people, my own girls say that uh, you have to claim your space. Nobody gives it to you on a platter. I will mean, not stand for this. And uh, you know the kind of problems that is leading to, right? Uh, a, a typical life that a woman was expected to lead is no longer uh, predictable. So that rage, that rage. So maybe that's a result of how repressed emotions used to be in the past. Yes, absolutely. So what, what, what are those causes? If you just hmm. dissect the causes, why these emotions have been repressed and why they're being expressed so much loudly in a very different way? Uh, yes. Two, three things if we could say. One is lack of emotional literacy. That means never ever we have tried to inbuilt a social emotional learning in schools or in emotional intelligence in the education sector, bringing up in the communities, in the mm. ecosystem, different ecosystems and trying to tell them. And uh, on top of that, we never have told or we have never imparted that how to regulate emotions. It's so very important, you know, and emotions are so very natural. So it is it is bound that people can get rage, it's bound that they can get, uh, uh, you know, fear, it can bound that any, any hatred, guilt, uh, grudge, everything. But having said that, when I have got into these triggers of the emotions and they are acting upon me and, I'm, and after a time, I'm not able to know whether I am doing good or bad, how am I expressing it? That mm. expressed behavior of regulation is supposed to be uh, somewhere taught and somewhere, yes. uh, you know, it should be also balanced or somewhere neutralized. When that didn't happen, people don't know and they're venting out. They're really venting out emotions, venting which is out. not, yeah, this is not the right way to handle the emotions. You're so right, Anupuna, you use the right word and it's being vented on social media and yes. in Many a times uh, it's causing a lot of hurt and embarrassment and uh, shame, which is exactly what you're trying to avoid. So an expression of emotion ought not to lead to any of these uh, resultant uh, feelings that people are having to struggle with today. But you find, uh, because uh, my interest is in generational issues, in families, the situation is very volatile sometimes because uh, the young people have more freedom today and perhaps they are uh, experiencing uh, events that uh, their parents never had any occasion to experience. So they don't have any uh, lessons for them or any guidelines for them and the young are struggling on their own. And uh, because there may be some kind of a guilt attached to it, Indian parents being quite, um, well, we are quite prescriptive. And uh, I think that results in the doors being shut in homes and the young are, you know, by themselves and they find families outside the family, outside the home, outside the biological family. But how do you, how do you kind of help uh, management of these emotions? It's a very tricky, tricky area. Yeah, absolutely. Parents also, see, we didn't, uh, uh, parents also never un understood or never undergone any kind of formal training on how to handle emotions. They have either experienced it through their parents or through the society which was surrounded by them. And whatever they have experienced, however they have perceived the you know, emotion and however they have regulated them, it's the same thing they wanted to impose it on their children which yes. the children are reverting back. They're telling that, no, I'm rebouncing back because this is not the way I have to deal with it. Say for an example, uh, if supposing uh, something has happened in the, uh, some, uh, some kind of discussion is happening in the family and the child try to also involve in the elders and try to give an a point of view. And then yes. immediately the child was shut off and by telling that you are, it's still a child, you cannot talk about all of this. And the child says that I'm an adult. I'm already 14 years old. I'm a teenager, I know what you're talking and I also wanted to give my perspective and that is shut off. I mean, that is shunned off by the parents. The child doesn't know where to go. 
the child feels very very disturbed the child feels why are my parents talk, talk, not able to you know talk to me engage with me listen to me and why are they telling me that you, i am not a part of the family at the, the moment they do this and they experience, the children experience this they go to the extent of thinking that my parents don't care for me my parents do not yes. love me i am yes. not important in the family you know these are the things which the children of this generation are carrying out and they're becoming so very independent and so very uh, you know forming their own type of uh, solutions and then thinking that hey is this the world is this the world i wanted to live or is it something yes. else i wanted to live so they're they're in a very confused state mm. second added on to this the pandemic has really uh, made the lives more miserable children are not able to involve and discuss many things they did not get any other atmosphere apart from the homes and they're locked up with the screens and they don't know how to express themselves and when they wanted their family to be together and they wanted parents to be really understanding parents mm. are also not at fault but they don't know how to handle the situations yes you know that's another uh, big huge gap between what we are seeing the parents um, uh, uh, you know the for the generation which the parents are there the generation where the children are there and um, the yeah and the children need really a kind of um, sounding board for them uh, wherein they can friendly with a very open minded transparency and friendliness people understand them give them chance to talk and then mm -hmm. also engage with them and see that how can they you know uh, mould them you know yes. to handle all of this and all so that's very important and critical at this point of time the shift that it requires the mind shift is not easy yes. so it's easy to theorize and to say that this is how it ought to be but when you're actually in that dynamic live volcanic situation you you are just thinking why is this happening why is this young person talking all of this for instance in families and purna it was absolutely unheard for the next generation to ask about property or to bring up financial issues we didn't ask our parents what they were planning to do with the property but my next generation is quite open about it and they would like to know in fact they are not beyond asking parents why didn't you plan your finances better where is your passive where is your passive income where is your you where are your compound earnings you just uh, were so happy with the salary this is not good enough i don't you invest in bitcoins and the earlier generation is not secure enough to or trusting enough to accept these ideas of investment coming from the younger generation who they feel lack the experience yes. so these are these are you know areas where there's conflict and uh, like you said the younger generation is not beyond expressing their unhappiness and um, many a times going to town with it sharing it with their friends which again is something that the early generations are not used to so overall you still think that this is a good thing that's happening this expression of feelings or do you think it's a phenomena that needs to be directed channelized or uh, uh, done in a with a certain degree of responsibility and accountability absolutely the later one is right because they have to we if we have already destroyed a much the destruction has become too much hmm. you know, and it, it, uh, the if we are not doing it this is an ever long pandemic with us i would say uh -huh. that because okay. we have already done a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, destruction why would why would i say that or why would i say it with lot of command is because i was on the other side of the uh, you know uh, horizon that means i am seeing these children grow they mm -hmm. get into the professional education they come to the corporates mm -hmm. when they corporates as a hr leader i have found umpty number of examples and experiences with me where things have not settled down with them during their childhood you know they mm -hmm. had those questions they had the angst they had the fear they had the hatred which were all bottled up you know mm -hmm. completely bottled up and then they came out in a different way in the adulthood completely in the workplaces you know people when it came to my table it came out as they are unproductive mm -hmm. they are goal oriented their performance they're not performance oriented when you sit and have conversations with them you know deep dive into their history their whole life what has happened they would have been either the eldest child who has never had a uh, role to play in the family just to take mm -hmm. the load of the family they would have been the youngest child whose voice was never heard mm -hmm. they either it could be the male versus the female child 
either it could be some abuse which the person is holding or mm -hmm. either it could be some of the uh, you know very traumatic experiences which the child has gone through and the child feels and makes up the mind that the world is like this mm -hmm. and so many examples of you know narcissism uh, you know the, uh, they, the these leaders are not able to make the workplaces psychologically safe these people are very, very, uh, you know, anger oriented and they mm. do not want to care about others. They are, they are very less empathetic leaders. So see how it is building. So mm. it is very important that whenever the child is expressing in the home, whatever is going on with them to have meaningful conversations. Mm. You know, the parents have to take out time to have a lot of meaningful conversations with the child to understand the child's overall day. Mm. And what are the significant uh, events which have happened in the child's life? Ask questions, engage with them, know their friends. What, are they, what do their friends mean for them? What do the teachers mean for them? What does that education means to them? Everything. Have some meaningful conversations with them. And whenever the child is telling, Ma, I'm not feeling okay or I'm feeling very jealous with this child. What is jealousy? Why are you getting this jealousy? Engage with that emotion. I'm sure that parents also would not be knowing everything, but they can peel out that onion very safely. Mm -hmm. And then the child will learn that every emotion is the right emotion. Every feeling is the right feeling to have it. But as I go, how do I take this feeling and work with it? Should I bottle it up? Should I express it? If I express it, how do I regulate it and express it in a way which is socially acceptable? Mm -hmm. You know, that is the time when you're using your complete brain into accessibility and uh, there is no emotional hijacks which happen or mm -hmm. there is not something which is bottled up in the whole of the body which can turn out to become a very psychosomatic disorder when the child grows up into an adult so it's quite important that the parents play a great role in forming up the child's emotional intelligence but that brings me to the question anapurna that why now earlier generations for instance we didn't talk so much with the parents and our parents talked even less with their parents there was yes. no conversation no dialogue at all it was one way communication this is what is to be done get on with it i for my generation i would come home and tell my mother that this is what happened in the school but expression of jealousy or expression of envy or expression of uh, some other you know negative uh, emotions were just uh, dismissed they would say, no, you shouldn't be feeling this way or you're the older sister, you should look after the younger ones or the younger ones should respect the older sisters. And there was no questioning. We never questioned that. We just followed. We did what we were told to do. And uh, I think uh, now if I look back, how had we lost out? We've been reason reasonably productive. We've uh, uh, are reasonably healthy and um, life is going on. And yet when I see the younger generation, I find them more fragile, uh, more, more confused, uh, quite chaotic sometimes in their uh, heads. And even at 25, 30, 31, they're still struggling with a sense of self or identity. Why is that happening? Why is yeah. that happening? So uh, what is happening is one is uh, we could also attribute this to the, emo uh, the information overload. You know, there is a lot of information overload and the right sources of information. So what okay. would happen is um, uh, child when it's time to, trying to, uh, you know, to ask any question, I will ask my parents, my parents will give me an answer if I'm not satisfied with that answer, mm -hmm. I will see for some other avenue. Yes. For that. Absolutely. So I will go and I will see with my friends, I will see on the net, I will ask so many things and if, yes. there is the, if the answer is matching, then I'm fine with it. If the answer is opposing or opposite, then my brain will ask questions. Why is it someone telling me like this? And why are my parents telling me like this? And every child uh, gives a lot of importance to their parents first. You know, they, mm -hmm. they will give uh, that parents, uh, parents, teachers, some of the people in the, uh, in the family, they give a lot of um, weightage to them. Hmm. When they put a lot of weightage to them and they get a particular answer and they see that something else, the world is giving me some other answers, they start, uh, you know, uh, comparing this. Comparing. And when the comparison happens and they're not satisfied with it and the comparison is happening more and more and they're getting differential opinions, hmm. then they may start thinking that my parents might not be giving me the right answers. 
Right. They are trying to be, oh, are they trying to protect me more? You know, that's called the uh, emotional protection, which is happening too much with this one. And they're not allowing me to, to uh, see beyond yeah. things. Or they may not be uh, giving me that kind of, um, uh, you know, um, uh, ways out to really establish the facts. Mm. So when this emotional information or when the overload of this information has happened, uh, what could happen is uh, they will uh, uh, do this distinction, distinction between all of this. And then they come to the formation of what could be right for me. Mm. What should I do? Okay. And uh, today's generation has kept themselves at the center of the stage first. It is. It means I, that me, myself. I, me, myself, I need to know what it is and uh, it should be for me. And why, why should I be, the, you know, having anything dearth of any resource? And now is it, have we all contributed to that? We have contributed, you know, we have yes. never told a no to in any resource for the present generation. That's right. And the generation doesn't understand that there is a deficit of resources. And if the deficit is there, then what should they do? Hmm. So there is abundance. The, ab the law of abundance cannot work for them. So they hmm. need to know that there are things and there are uh, most of the times you will be in situations where there will be a deficit. And how do I tackle at that point of time? Because even before the child opens their mouth and asks for any kind of gadgets, any kind of toys, any kind of things, they are already present on their tables. Is it a right thing? Is it a wrong thing? Things to, we should ponder. We should discuss. We should figure out what is it. So uh, am I doing the right kind of parenting? Questions are there. Yeah. Questions are there about the parenting, the art of parenting, and what is the right kind of parenting? Pro previous generation, we never asked these questions, you know, because yes. we felt that whatever parenting is there, that's the right kind What's of parenting. Right thing? Hmm. Yeah. But we also had a herd mentality at that point of time, I would say. Yes. True. We never wanted to do that. And the, uh, and there was, uh, they, they, and today the race of this whole competition is so high, so mm -hmm. high, which is also putting children under peer pressures. Yes. The peer pressure is something which the child is not able to take. The child has to have an overall, uh, you know, uh, uh, seeing of their personality. They just don't mm. think that I should be good in education or something. They'll tell I should have good dress. I should have multiple dresses. I should have multiple gadgets. So how is the evaluation happening of the child? Mm. Between child to child, there is an evaluation by telling, hey, I'm wearing an eye watch. Do you have an eye watch? Hey, I'm having an iPods. I'm having iPhones. What is mm. the evaluation? Where are we mm. evaluating the children, you know? And how is it, this is happening? Where do your parents work? How much is the income in your home? What do, mm. what do you, what type of gadgets do you have in home? So they, they are opening in this questioning. They are yeah. open to all these questions, but it is right. It's okay. It's let us not um, uh, put them off by telling that we should not ask these questions or you should not know all of this. But this is, uh, is it, uh, we are creating, uh, how do we talk about minimalism? How do we talk mm -hmm. about law of dependence for them? How do we talk about um, sharing, caring? And um, how can we say that a pandemic like this can be a good leveler for all of us? Yes. You may have all of it, mm -hmm. but uh, give examples for them when they, they didn't have that small thing called, which is a natural thing called oxygen availability. Mm -hmm. What could have happened for them? So right. we should we should share with them stories. We should share with them examples. We should have conversations. Heated conversations can be there as a part of it. But again, uh, those meaningful conversations, discussions are all a very important thing at this point of time. Sure, Annapurna. And uh, what are these two phrases? Uh, psychic pain and emotional labor. I hear yeah. a lot of these two phrases wherever whenever I'm talk, reading about the younger generation what yeah. exactly is emotional labor uh, people like me say yeah is my kya emotional labor no? what is this emotional labor and what is this psychic pain what is psychic pain what is psychic yes. pain yes. Yes, yes yes so emotional labor when we were whenever we talk when you are you have even um, that, uh, means reminded me of emotion work also so these two are two things which we talk together, you know, emotional labor and emotion work, uh, which is emotion work means emotional management and emotional regulation. Mm. So uh, usually in the organizations, when we talk about it, it's all during interactions, you know, interactions with any outside world when we are doing and uh, how to conform to those roles. 
you know mm -hmm. and this is where they're having this emotional labor you know emotional labor is a very prototypically uh, it is uh, uh, you know service with a smile it's okay. like that Okay, but mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. I'm putting a face, public face, so that everyone feels uh, that uh, they can uh, accept me as whatever it is, what my clients wanted, my customers wanted, what my patients wanted, what my parents wanted and all. That is a time the child or the adult, whoever it is, they get into this emotional labor. Hmm. But whereas, uh, and usually it happens in the organizations because we wanted to please our bosses, we wanted to please our, um, you know, our colleagues, everything and all. It is just like the physical labor. It's a very effortful and a very fatigueful uh, when done very repeatedly all day long and it can cost, it can be costly in terms of performance errors and uh, it can be cause a lot of emotional burnout for people and uh, when surfacing uh, because it is it is it is in feeling in, inauthentic at most of the times okay. we are putting a, a, a you know false persona for us and uh, and the, then uh, and research has also shown that um, uh, when this when this emotional labor is high there is an anxiety and fatigue uh, which can come up into a, a very uh, um, a large space and um, people can suffer from a uh, lot of abuses, a lot of um, you know uh, psychosomatic disorders and things like, things like that and on. So it is better to deal with this emotional labor by emotional regulation. Okay. You know, uh, talking about it rather than faking anything, rather than uh, you know trying to keep something in the mind and something doing a, a, which is not uh, uh, this and repressing uh, the angers and things like that, which is not at all a solution for us. So mm. just going back to the, uh, you know, uh, they can take some recovery breaks. Whenever they feel something like this, they can take, take some recovery breaks, be real with the, their friends uh, without break, without faking it, be real with the pa parents or something which is happening and reduce the strain and, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, regulate all of these emotions which is happening. So mm. that's very important. If you do not do that uh, over a time, there is a huge emotional burnout, and uh, they can and uh, the venting of the emotions can become into a very different uh, space or different way than the normal required way. Mm -hmm. So that's about the uh, you know what uh, what ca can cause the emotional uh, labor, psychic pain. Psychic pain is again the mental pain which is there. Um, it's ache in the mind. We tell it is there is an ache in the mind, uh, equivalent to a headache, which we can talk about it. And psychic pain is also characterized by uh, many of those uh, words where, uh, you know, there is agony, there is angst, uh, there is, um, you know, uh, humiliation, misery, suffering and things like that and all. So right. how do I deal with all of this? No, how do I deal when I when I get into this psychic pain and all? Uh, how to how to uh, you know describe this? How to uh, work around this and uh, how to do this? It is again uh, you know uh, how can I um, take some breaks? How do I talk about it? How do I regulate all of this and also have um, coping up mechanisms? Hmm. You know why do I do not why and uh, how can it work with this coping up uh, uh, mechanisms whenever I am having any kind of unpleasant feeling which is going on with me hmm. and uh, things like that. So uh, I need to have uh, some kind of people around me to talk about it. Uh, mm -hmm. Or else I should have some kind of um, methodology to divert my mind to see that whether I can put my mind to some other activity which can calm me up, which can soothe me up, which can cope up with my emotion and then I can get back to my whole of my well-being and, and you know, uh, building resilience and things like that and all. Okay. So these these are very important and these have to be um, uh, inculcated in a very, very young stage itself. Otherwise, uh, psychic pain can become intolerable and it can go into a very deep, intense psychological suffering also. Hmm. Again, uh, again, a term and a phenomenon that perhaps my generation was not familiar with because no. uh, this generation is more sensitive and there's more happening in the environment. There's a lot of bad news uh, because of the, I mean, some of it is based on reality and then the media amplifies because they say that good news never makes for news. Only the alarming uh, happenings make for news. So they're only hearing about the climate, uh, the climate crisis and other political problems going on. And that also causes them, adds to the psychic pain. Yes, so there's yes. a f fear and a sense of insecurity all the time. 
yes also to add on when in the previous generation to going to a counselor or going to a psychiatrist or something was felt as if that are ye to pagal hi ban gaya is to pagal pan ho gaya but hmm. now that 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 phase is changing people hmm. are going to counselors and it is something very important that we have to go and to discuss things with it. going to a counselor talking to a counselor doesn't mean that we have got into some psychiatric disorders or something and all hmm. it is everyone needs a healthy empathetic ear to listen so it is it is just labeled as a counselor but we all had counselors it is not that hmm. we in the previous generation also we didn't have counselors mausi chachi koi bhi to koi mama mami somewhere someone was there to vent it out and to discuss and they were soothing our things they were hmm. helping us to see things in a very this and they tell okay beta it's okay i understand i do this and all somewhere in the family we were doing this and the other thing is the biggest um, uh, inhibition to go to anything and people feeling uh, talking about mental things is very uh, you know social really not uh, acceptable but today mm. it is not like that today it's people right. know understand that mental well being is a very important thing yes. if my child at its age of 11 or 12 uh, he is not able to concentrate he is having lot of um, hormonal issues he is having lot of um, other uh, bullying issues or body mm. shaming issues these are all very important to be addressed very these important are- Uh, i agree anupurna these are important but there have to be some filters in place at some points you can't be taking the mask off completely it would be impossible to survive as a unit as a society as a civilization as a family if yeah. you didn't keep on the mask at least for some of the time you can <laughs> all the time be right so that, that, that maybe we've not reached that stage yet to balance out our emotional management and uh, what is uh, yeah. sustainable let's say sustainable yeah. interactions with each yes, other yes yes absolutely then for that for all of that it is it, see these are not something like a switch of a button everything can happen right you just can't tell okay you you're feeling uh, okay this is the incident which has happened this is the prescription i'm giving you this is what chalo, it chalo. no ah. that is not the immediate uh, steroid i can give and stop it everything no it cannot okay. happen like that hmm. we need to be in that we need to peel the onion into layers understand it and also make the person whoever the child undergoing this all these things a, ma- a party to the whole of the discussion and mm. understand what's right what is not right what has happened why do why are these feelings come to coming to you and things like that and if supposing uh, things have happened sometimes we can allow things to happen you know sometimes we need we we can put the children to that emotional turmoil for some time yes it's it, it's it needs to be done they need to know the other side also that yeah. emotional turmoils can happen mm-hmm. and these these they are need to experience all of that so it's not always um, necessary that we keep everyone in a, a, a very euphoric state right no that's not the, that's not the, the way how to build emotional intelligence in a child all emotions are important all emotions need to be understood all emotions can be felt and um, they can go through and it is painful sometimes yes the pain is fine it's a worth it and uh, understanding that because if you wanted to be an empathetic person at the end mm. if you do not understand all of this then you cannot mm. be uh, an empathetic person right so finally uh, again one last thought on purna because uh, feelings hi karte rahenge feelings ki baatein karte rahenge to kaam kab karenge paise kab kamayenge khana kaun bana <laughs> roti roti sabzi kaise banegi <laughs> i mean you so that's uh, just a practical thought that sometimes uh, occurs to me because how much time can we be spending on talking feelings sometimes i do feel that we are going overboard mm. with it but um, i guess uh, uh, it, with time it will perhaps settle down in some manner and my final question to you anupurna is what words of advice do you have for my generation for the older generation older see i would say uh, uh, it's time that we we don't have uh, a feeling that we belong to different generations but okay. it is it's a very good time now to come forward as a collaborative team hmm. that means uh, see when i can learn at at different generations can learn how to equip themselves to the gadgets and come up with the technology so why right. not uh, you know mingle uh, and then uh, create a healthier world so you have got certain experiences the younger generation has got certain experiences and the, the younger generation has got a certain ideas and thoughts and beliefs we right. have got certain ideas their thoughts and beliefs so why don't we all come together 
Mm-hmm. And I I found it profoundly, uh, uh, you know, successful even in the organizations when generations came together, and uh, they they took over the different different roles. Sometimes the older generation took um, the role of a leader, coach, mentor, or things like that. Sometimes yes. the younger generation took it over. When Absolutely. we were all technology the technologically not savvy, the younger generation came forward and took the leading role. So we need to. but uh, i think flexibility the cognitive flexibility mm-hmm. which we need to have is something which will uh, swim us through and uh, really bring a great world when we are all collaborating instead of showing casing any kind of differences lovely that's a great yeah. note yeah. yes that's a great note to end on anupurna and what you're describing just now is what has come to be known as generation v so that is generation virtual uh, where uh, irrespective of geographical location your gender your age We we are here, for instance, talking right now, and other people are listening to us. So that's generation V. That's a great note to end on. Any 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 last words, Anupurna? I'll give you a moment if you want to close. <laughs> I would say that uh, emotions uh, are there. Uh, emotions yes. drive people. People drive performance. That's what I would say. So just Wonderful. just go with it. Go with it. Right. Yeah. Thank you very much, Thank Anupurna. Thank, Thank you, everyone, you. listening Thank to you. us and. This is the senior generational bridge builder signing off, and our next week the hot potato is millennials and the influencer phenomena. See you all next week. Thank you very much. Thank It's a you. goodbye from Annapurna and a goodbye.